Ja, ja, ja. Das ist äh, Cool. Ja. Test, test. Nein, nein, nein. Wir haben Start.
welcome to this oops, me, welcome to this talk how open source enables cloud computing in China. Our presenter this morning is Cho Nguyen. Yeah. And uh, Cho Fu is uh, has more than 14 years hands-on experience in IT industries, uh, serving with companies such as Siemens, Motorola, and Oracle. He's also been contributing to a number of different projects, Avocado VT and TP Lippert. Uh, with that, uh, we will turn it over to Chung Fu. Uh, if there are any questions at any point, just raise your hand and I'll try to get a microphone to you. We want to make sure to record everything. So please go ahead, Chung Okay, thank you. So let's start that. So my name is Chen Fu Wen from Light Heart Company, based in Beijing. So today I want to present one topic of how open source enable cloud computing in China. So this is the agenda today. So first I will review the status of cloud computing in China. Secondly, we are together to insight into how open source technology interact with the cloud computing in China. The second part is the I just want to share some experience how Chinese companies benefit from the urban cloud technology by engagement and uh, and in the university they contribute the code to the open source community. The final part we are talking about the look for the feature and the challenge ahead of us. So this is the IT Mark 2017. Worldwide landscape, you can see here the China uh, totally at the market will hit to 2014.5 billion US dollars. So, specific to South industry in China, this year it will reach to 140 billion US dollars. And on each year, there is uh, one, 100,000 graduate programmers. And uh, now there are 770 billion internet users. I count for more than uh, 46, near 46 of the total population. And uh, in terms of the cloud aggregate market in China, you can see that the market will grow at least 30 percent year on year in the coming three or uh, five years. And in the 2020, the total value will be hit 140 uh, yuan. So this is specific to public cloud market. So the public cloud market size will grow up at least 40% year on year in the coming five years. So much like other countries, the public cloud in China also one company play dominant role. So this is Alibaba Cloud. It almost account for half of the total market size. Just begin follow that is Tencent Cloud and the China Telecom Cloud. So in China, there are various these cities that uh, not only produce the cloud technology based on open source, but also they consume the uh, open source cloud, cloud technology. So this city is in three representative cities. The first one is Shanghai. Shanghai is the China finance and market center. So in Shanghai, whether it is the finance or stock or even insurance, the industry, the highly, widely use the cloud technology based on the open source. The second city is the Beijing. Beijing is the headquarter of university or research center and also is the innovation center. So here a lot of cloud technology based on open source are developed here and also whether it's individual or the enterprise user that consume the open source technology in cloud. The third one is the Hongzhou. Hongzhou is the headquarter of, of the Alibaba cloud. So it is the newly emerging cloud technology center. So if you have been traveled to the China, you must, you should could be by passion by the three things. Actually, if we carefully examine the reason behind that, you can see all these three, four things is backing up by the uh, open source cloud technology. First is the dogless shared bicycle. It's used the IO technology. The IO technology now is open source. The second is the Alipay or WeChat Pay. 
is a kind of uh, in one day there are millions or thousands of transactions. Those te- transactions could should be powered by the cloud technology back end. And uh, China high speed railway. Actually, the China railway used the open stack set up the large uh, set up the private cloud. Mm-hmm. On this on this private cloud, they build up their online ticket sales system and it's online shopping. Whether it's the JD.com or it's the Alibaba, they, they have they not only the public cloud provider, they also use the public public cloud technology in enable the online sales system, online shopping. So from here we can see that today China is society society they are really powered by the open source technology. So the second part is that before we talk about how open source technology interact with the cloud in China, we just have a quick review of the open source journey in China. And no, lovely is a device uh, no, until now they have 20 years old in open source technology in China. The first phase started from in 1998 to the Sony 3. So during these phases, they just uh, uh, people just uh, want to learn the open source, so even just this uh, propagate the open source technology by translating the book to the Chinese. So a lot of time in the people mind, open source is just equals Linux. Linux. So the second phase started from 2004 to until 2006. So during the period, some people just want to create some open source elements, such as China OSAS Promotion Union. So one, good, one of the play ideas they, they put that out that they create a sign of, sign of something like think tank. The think tank try to bring out some ideas and organize some open source community events to promote open source technology in China. And the third phase is starting from 2007 to the 2011. Some pilot companies such as Huawei or Land Level, they actively consume open source technology, but however, they still contribute very small to the open source community. The fourth phase starting from 2012 to until today or even in the future. So open source technology since this phase is a booming. Whether from individual or from government or from enterprise, they have set up common sense and open source they are, they are, are really needed. In this period, they are bilateral direction. So company in, Beijing, uh, in China not only to consume the open source technology, but also contribution back. Some pilot company such as Huawei, Alibaba, by the Tencent, they contribute much of back to the open source community. So a lot of events or promotion activities hold up in each year. Even for the individuals, we can see on the GitHub, there are many of them from China. So we will examine the open, uh, open source technology succeeded across the world. The open source ecosystem play a very important role. Important role. So the success model also apply in China. So let's take a look at the open source ecosystem in China. First is the developer roles. Now on the GitHub, there are 220,000 active GitHub contributors from China. And also, just I mentioned, a lot of local organizations set up. They work with the international community, such as Linux Foundation, CNCF, and Apache Foundation, to try to promote open source technology in China. For the user, use point of view, in China, the largest population in China, individuals or under, under, uh, enterprise in it, uh, users, they, in their daily activity, they just uh, consume a lot of open source technology. So the open source technology or solution or products can form, can develop by their and and development team or can be buy from vendors. So vendors also may play an important role. They suggest uh, provide some service or product to the local customer. So some some of vendors like Red Hat, IBM, or Huawei. So how is open source software usage in in cloud in China? So the the green pie shows that currently use open source software in the cloud industry is count 93, and the prime use open source is count 10%. So together, there are more than 90% they have to want to use open source technology in their cloud industry. So how do they implement? 
So 90% of at least 90% is the just used the in-house development method. That means they set up their ID center to develop the solution or product based on open source cloud technology. 16% also is used open source provider. That means they buy from the solution from the third-party vendors such as Red Hat and the, the other companies. And uh, the majority is used both two ways, in-housing or buy from the provider. So cloud deployment, we have a sense of way that how many uh, virtualized server deployment. So uh, along most of the majority focus on the just 100,000 virtualized server also. And for the container deployment, so most of the companies say that they use the content technology just for the office of the mission and the elastic scaling. And for the server development storage deployment, most uh, use this technology for the file storage and the block storage. So, there are various is the, uh, uh, industry in China. Different industry have different uh, uh, maturity model, and they have different deployment about open source cloud technology. So, the X uh, axis indicated the. Uh, development stage, they from the integration to transformation to innovation. The Y axis indicates the compound annual growth rate. So you can see that the manufacturing industry, education, and government, those stay in the integration stage. So their attitude to the cloud is to try to use the open stack or some kind of open source test of some private cloud. And they care about IT insecurity. For the second stage, uh, for energy, transportation, health care, there's actually is already set up four stack uh, cloud technology, whether it's the pass or it's the ice or the certain kind of technology. They try to emerge some uh, cut edge technology based on that, such as the big data. And for the innovation part stage, there is the telecom, retail, and other kind of, uh, industry. So this industry has the emerging, uh, adopt a lot of emerging technology based on their underlying uh, cloud. I'm sorry, what was FSI? What, what is FSI? I think it's a foreign service or you must get. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, not, yeah. Yes. So let's examine the four cloud stack in China, really powered by its open source technology. So from the bottom line, they use the uh, underlying open city is in centers or Ubuntu. For the virtualized layer, ice layer, they use the KM10 is the hypervisor. They use the open source as the virtualized manager layer. For the container technology, they use the Kubernetes missiles as the orchestration tools. They use underlying environment is Docker. For the mid-layer or past layer, they use the open source uh, my circle, my circle, MongoDB, certain kind of things. On the application layer, they use the IoT open source, they use the Jenkins pipeline, they use the sign, uh, TensorFlow uh, for the Spark or at Hadoop, or they use the TensorFlow for AI. So from the bottom to the top, you can see for the four cloud stack, they just uh, generally related to the cloud open source cloud technology. So can do the third part is the so if we know or not, we own that uh, open source uh, technology is very successful in the cloud industry. So if we examine find out the reason behind that, we can what we can find out what we are doing today is just circle on the three element, key element. One is project, the other one is solution, the other one is value. So these three key element is something like uh, innovation gears. They work together to just spin the innovation and move the open source technology forward. So in terms of projects today, we have incredible number of the projects on GitHub, even millions of them. So mo the most important one, I think that we, we try to need to how project can incorporate, include some solution. Those solution is, is, is really address the customer need and really resolve the real life issues. So in China, you can see many companies just work with the international community to bring partner together 
to select some projects with meeting this criteria. So furthermore, if the project cannot bring the value to the company which contribution heavily, it's not a good project. So the project good project with solution could be bring some benefit. Let the company to earn the money, then can bring money back and put more money, community resources on the project and make the whole project move forward. So in terms of engagement in open source, so first thing in economy is the code contribution. Yeah, that's the important part. But beyond that, we also needed to put code into some valuable project, not just a common project. Because the, if the project cannot really resolve the customer issues, no one buy that, the code is waste. waste. So in China, a lot of companies just trying to uh, in order to achieve this, a lot of companies in China try to be want to be a member of the project, try to be the technical leader, or the uh, or be could be a strategic interest group leader, or even be the um, board member of the foundation, some kind of things. So just talking about code contribution, so I just give one example. So for code part, you can see that this long by country, Chinese from Chinese side is the long term force. And for membership, you can see that the top level of the foundation, there are two companies from China, is one of the far away, the other is Tencent. For the gold member, is the Alibaba Cloud, Baidu. For the CS, the top level is the Platinum membership, we are Alibaba Cloud, we are far away, we are JD.com. And the gold member from CNC, they are Baidu, or Tencent, or CTE. So also in the OpenStack from the Delect board, we are three members from Chinese company. So project contribution, this company contributed a lot of projects on the open source community. So I don't want to go through that each list, so you can just uh, get to the plans. So now can do the final part is to look for the future. So open source technology, especially in the cloud, it's like a trend. It already start, start in China, so it cannot be stopped. So if you think ahead three or five years later, we can see some trends here. Number one is cloud elevator. So you can see that today in China, whether it's individual or enterprise, enterprise users, you cannot uh, live without open source technology. When you are uh, in today, in daily life, you buy things online, the backup technology is the cloud. This from the open source technology. So you can see in the coming future, some kind of representative technology such as OpenStack, Canon technology, Kubernetes, KVM, and IoT. Those open source technology will be widely, more widely be adopted in China. The second one is customize local focus. So I can give one example. That far away, hope. Uh, China Mobile, the largest uh, mobile in operator in China, to set up some cloud cloud based on OpenStack. They set up a cellular cluster, but they want to uh, have a the same kind of plan to manage the cellular cluster. At the last time, on the OpenStack upstream, don't have this solution. So Huawei company just uh, helped the China Mobile resolve the issue and contribute the code back to the upstream. So in the future, you can see that the industry adopt the cloud. We are spread from mobile internet industry to the traditional industry, such as channel railway, some kind of things. From non mission critical to the mission critical, such as the finance or bank system, that kind of things. And uh, number four is the local company try to set up open source ecosystem. They try to set up strong partnership. I can give an example. The Baidu company, uh, the auto so open source uh, Apollo auto driving platform is the, the intelligent driving car system. And uh, it almost costs than more than 30 billion, I think, US dollars. So they open source that and they try to bring uh, the partnership from international or from local car play producer. So. 
challenges Adan has, security. So if we ask uh, what's the number one concern when adopt cloud technology, so number one should be security. They uh, still have some concern about this for when they adopt open source cloud technology. The so second one is uh, open source uh, governance. I can give you some here, the Tencent, which has the largest uh, 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 WeChat, WeChat, right? The owner of WeChat. They try to open source their a lot of technology, but the, the code includes some kind of a proprietary software and some open source software. So they try to make learn to handle that gracefully to open source that. So it kind of takes time to for the open source governance. Mental learning and education. In China, in the college, we actually have some open source courses, some Linux, some open source, some kind of things. So it takes time to educate from the high school student or, or the college student or the, the kids, so it's time for that. So migrate to open source technologies mostly. We know that in China, a lot of enterprises still use the legacy ad infrastructure. So it's easy, not easy for them to migrate their yeah, legacy ad infrastructure to the open source support yeah, infrastructure. Cooperation among the community and with and with the standard organization. We know that uh, we are a lot of local community that just work with the internet community to try to have more events or activity held in uh, in China, and they also uh, want to work with some uh, uh, internet standard organizations such on the 5G. They work with the uh, international telecom union, some kind of things. Work out NFV spec, some kind of this. So in the future, I think that they, they need a more some kind of cooperation. Okay, that's it. Yeah, question. So the longer I work in open source and have an opportunity to work with other people across the world, mm -hmm. um, I realize that the, the the basic cultural norms within mm -hmm. a country or a group or, or anything really dictate sometimes interest in working in open source. Mm -hmm. I think when you mentioned some of the, on the last slide, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned some of the challenges. Um, do you think that... Um, and I ask this with all good intentions, um, but do you think that the, the general cultural feeling within China is one that can operate in this meritocracy, as Chris talked about in, in his keynote? Is it, is it, are people comfortable with, with um, the interactions they receive or the feedback so, they receive, positive yeah. or negative? Do, do you know what I mean? Uh, go back to here. Uh, this company is have the largest, uh, uh, in China largest, WeChat, uh, uh, WeChat, no? Uh, one year ago, they are not actually passed by some lead conference. But this year, we have some lead conference uh, holding in. So just the go one step is they become the top member of that. Right? Before that year, they don't need to consider to open source any technology. Now, they open a lot of projects. Only one in one year. Wow. One year, so, that's great. Yeah. So, whether from the enterprise or individual, they actually know that open source they are need. They are learning their needs. So, I couldn't mind knowing that even in four or five way, there are five hundred, more than five hundred engineers work on OpenStack. Yeah. So, but you, I just saw that uh, in second uh, position, I think like this one. So this kind of things, if we have a Java example in China, you are question about these four things. Those things should could be all powered by open source technology. So I think that from the human mindset, the little 
little by little excess of missiles they need. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to follow on to his uh, question and something that uh, arose to uh, the. the I was thinking about during the presentation because this is all very exciting, of course. Uh, uh, my question here then is, um, are there clear or open signals coming from governmental levels uh, proposing to communities and others that, hey, open source may be a good solution for handling some of your problems? That's uh, do they Do they openly adopt the ideas that hey open source is good for people and they promote that or is it something that like here comes from the grassroots as it were from, from yeah. contributors yeah so i can show you. those uh community is yeah how come it's uh, funded by government so a lot of the events or communities events activities actually they are Get the money found by low government to promote open source technology. So if we uh, speak, uh, go back to your question, we know that uh, now there are the China, US uh, trade trade better. One of the key concerns is the IP issue, right? Intellectual property. So Chinese government realize that how can we resolve that? Open source, right? Open source don't have the IP issue in most cases. So why not we use open source? So in, they encourage local enterprise to just participate actively more in that in the coming future, I think. So, so as you say then, the Chinese government and developers see this as a way of sort of uh, removing themselves of the burden of, say, restricted IP and uh, opening up to a more uh, fruitful development and uh, and implementation for government to, or for for problems that need to be solved, mm -hmm. uh, giving them new tools to do certain things and getting them away from the restrictions of proprietary technologies. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there is it, is it. Would you consider it then an overall positive outlook on the part of the government for, toward open source and, and where they want to go with it? So they they look at it as an overall positive thing. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, they look at it in a very positive, yeah, attitude, attitude, uh, attitude. Yeah, that's like you can see one single is the why there is so many company in trying as the. A membership very high level. Uh, sorry, yeah. So this company is not joining in the two, yeah. seven two years. Yeah, not five years. Only two, seven two years. Yeah. In the Linux Foundation, in the 2007, we have uh, another exact number is the more than 15 companies from China joined the Linux Foundation in one year. Wow. Yes. So, uh, what? So, in one of the slides, you mentioned that uh, ISVs play a role between the users and the vendors. So yeah, ISV yeah, ecosystem. So, my question is that how how important do you think a role of ISVs such as Red Hat and Microsoft is to uh, play encouraging more uh, Chinese companies to be involved in open source? Like you said, in the last two years, you've seen companies become platinum members and open source there. So yeah. can companies like Red Hat push uh, other companies a certain example that, you know, I think you should open source your code or is, le do you think that? Yeah. So you can see that uh, for SV, uh, we, for example, Red Hat just used the way to set up strong partnership with a local provider. Huawei or Alibaba, we have set up a cooperation partnership on the open source technology, how to let customer trust our solution or products. So that's the one way. Another is that we are we have some uh, cooperation project with a um, college or university. We try to we have some intern each year. We have intern from the different university. We try to learn, learn to at the beginning know that we have tried to uh, IT, uh, Chinese marketing that had they have some 
advice. They try to uh, cooperate with the other university not in Beijing. They have sent some people regularly to talk about open source technology in the college students. Yeah. So uh, it takes time, and I mean that uh, it's not cannot be achieved in one night. So yeah. Is it, or are, are there possibly also um, security concerns uh, with regard to the adoption or expansion of the use of open source technologies? That is, when you're locked into proprietary solutions, you're stuck at fixing things at the patch at the pace of whoever is making that product. With open source products, if you have a good uh, sustaining base of engineers and developers, you can respond to uh, security challenges perhaps a bit more adeptly uh, uh, and more reflexively. Um, is that a possible consideration in this, or is that not well known? I mean, well, there are concerns about security from many perspectives. One of them is about uh, data privacy. Uh, because the, now the system is quite complex. There are different layers and they incorporate a lot of uh, code. So when they use that, some companies don't have some expert, technical support to handle the security policy. So, that, so that's why we need SV. Yeah. For that hand, we guarantee that we have longest support, whether it's the bug fix or the security point of view. Yeah. So I think that's the, for many, many large enterprises, they still trust the software from the SV. Yeah. Yeah, they used. Are there any more questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.